Chapter 1. Loving the Man Who Doesn't Love Back It was Jill's first session, and she looked doubtful. Pert and petite, with blonde orphan Annie curls, she sat stiffly on the edge of the chair facing me. Everything about her seemed round, the shape of her face, her slightly plump figure, and most particularly her blue eyes, which took in the framed degrees and certificates on my office wall. She asked a few questions about my graduate school and counseling license, and then mentioned, with obvious pride, that she was in law school. There was a brief silence. She looked down at her folded hands. I guess I'd better start talking about why I'm here. She spoke rapidly, using the momentum of her words to gather courage. I'm doing this, seeing a therapist, I mean, because I'm really unhappy. It's men, of course. I mean, <laughs> me and men. I always do something to drive them away. Everything starts out fine. They really pursue me and everything, and then, after they get to know me, she tensed visibly against the coming pain. It all falls apart. She looked up at me now, her eyes shining with held-back tears, and continued more slowly. I want to know what I'm doing wrong, what I have to change about me, because I'll do it. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm really a hard worker. She began to speed up again. It's not that I'm unwilling. I just don't know why this keeps happening to me. I'm afraid to get involved anymore. I mean, it's nothing but pain every time. I'm beginning to be really afraid of men. Shaking her head, the round curls bouncing, she explained with vehemence, I don't want that to happen because I'm very lonely. In law school, I have lots of responsibility, and then I'm working to support myself, too. These demands could keep me busy all the time. In fact, that's pretty much all I did for the past year. Work, go to school, study, and sleep. But I missed having a man in my life. Quickly, she continued. Then I met Randy. When I was visiting friends in San Diego two months ago, he's an attorney, and we met one night when my friends took me out dancing. Well, we just hit it off right away. There was so much to talk about, except that I guess I did most of the talking. But he seemed to like that. And it was just so great to be with a man who was interested in things that were important to me, too. Her brows gathered together. He seemed really attracted to me, you know, asking if I was married. I'm divorced, have been for two years. If I lived alone, that kind of stuff. I could imagine how Jill's eagerness must have shown as she chatted brightly with Randy over the blaring music that first night, and the eagerness with which she welcomed him a week later when he extended a business trip to Los Angeles, an extra hundred miles to visit her. At dinner, she offered to let him sleep at her apartment so that he could postpone the long drive back until the next day. He accepted her invitation, and their affair began that night. It was great. He let me cook for him and really enjoyed being looked after. I pressed his shirt for him before he dressed that morning. I love looking after a man. We got along beautifully. She smiled, wistfully. But as she continued her story it became clear that Jill had almost immediately become completely obsessed with Randy. When he returned to his San Diego apartment, the phone was ringing. Jill warmly informed him that she had been worried about his long drive and was relieved to know he was safely home. When she thought he sounded a little bemused at her call, she apologized for bothering him and hung up. But a gnawing discomfort began to grow in her, fueled by the awareness that once again, she cared far more than the man in her life did. Randy told me once not to pressure him, or he would just disappear. I got so scared. It was all up to me. I was supposed to love him and leave him alone at the same time. I couldn't do it. So I just got more and more scared. The more I panicked, the more I chased him. Soon, Jill was calling him almost nightly. Their arrangement was to take turns calling, but often when it was Randy's turn, the hour...